Hello students, welcome to Marine Engineering Tutorials. I am Atul Kumar Gupta and back with a new tutorial. We are presently studying marine boilers. Today we have 30th lecture and the topic is boiler water testing. For reliable operation of water tube boilers, boiler water testing should be carried out daily. In case of smoke tube boilers, weekly testing is acceptable. Most of the ships use treatment chemicals and testing kits supplied either by room marine or meter. The testing and treatment procedure discussed here is as per the chart supplied by Blue Marine. Test results are plotted on the graphs supplied by Blue Marine and submitted to them every month. They analyze the result and provide the feedback to ships regarding the condition of water water along with any necessary advice. Occasionally, their service engineer visits the ship while in port and carries out the test to confirm that suitable treatment is being provided to the boiler. Phenolphthalein alkalinity test. Following procedure is used for conducting phenolphthalein alkalinity test. Correct. 50 ml of cool boiler water sample. Pour into evaporating dish. Add 4 drops of phenolphthalein indicator. Add sulfuric acid N by 10 drop by drop until pink color disappears. Note the level of acid in the burette. Convert milliliter of sulfuric acid used as per the table and record result in ppm as p affinity and adjust dosage as necessary. So we can see here if the P affinity is between 0 to 30 ppm, we need to add 0.15 liter of concentrated liquid, apply liquid GC per ton of the boiled water. If the ppm is between 40 to 70, we need to add 0 0.1 liter per ton of boiled water. If it is between 80 to 90, we need to add 0 0.05 liter per ton of boiled water. If it is between 100 to 150, it is the satisfactory range. In case it goes beyond 150, we have to reduce by blowdown. Total alkalinity test. Total alkalinity test is a continuation of P alkalinity test, thus previous sample is used. Add 3 drops of total alkalinity indicator. Continue titration and note the final level of acid in the burette. Convert milliliter of sulfuric acid used as per previous table and record result in ppm as total alkalinity. Total alkalinity test result must be less than twice the phenolphthalein alkalinity. In case it goes more Dose 1 liter of DC regardless of the P affinity and test again in 2 hours. 
chloride test. Following procedure is used to find chlorides in boiling water. Measure 2 ml of cool boiling water sample into a glass tube. Add 3 drops of phenolphthalein indicator. Add N by 10 sulfuric acid drop wise until pink color disappears. Add one more drop. Add 6 drops of potassium chromate sample will turn yellow. Add N by 10 silver nitrate drop wise until sample turns orange. Drops of N by 10 silver nitrate multiplied by 50 gives us the ppm of chlorides. Record the result and refer to the tab table for blow down adjustment. As you can see here, up to 300 ppm it is in the acceptable range, but when the chloride go beyond 300, we need to bring it down by blow down and keep it under the control. Excess phosphate test. Following procedure is used to find excess phosphates in boiling water. Fill the sample cup to 25 milliliter mark with cool boiling water sample. Place the boiler phosphate and pure taper tip in the bottom of the sample cup. Snap the tip by squeezing the ampule toward the size of the cup. The sample will fill the ampule and begin to mix with the reagent. Remove the boiler phosphate ampule from the cup. Mix the contents of the ampule by inverting it several times allowing bubble to travel from end to end each time. While all liquid from the exterior of the ampule and wait for 5 minutes for full color development. While using the comparator, be sure it is illuminated by a white light directly above it. The filled boiler phosphate ampule should be placed between the color standard for viewing it. It is important that ampule be compared by placing it on both sides of the standard tube before concluding that it is darker, lighter or equal to the standard. Record the result and adjust dosage as per the table. So if we get the value of excess phosphate between 0 to 10, we need to add 30 grams per ton of the boiler water with agent B, which is the phosphate boiler water treatment. If the PPM is between 10 to 20, we need to add 15 grams per ton of boiler water. Within 20 to 40 PPM, it is the satisfactory range, but if it exceeds 40 ppm, we need to reduce it by blowdown. 
reserve hydrogen test pune procedure is used to find reserve hydrogen in polar water fill the sample cup to 25 ml mark with cooled polar water sample and place emergency corrosion inhibitor and pure tapered tip in the bottom of the sample cup snap the tip by squeezing and pure towards the side of the cup the sample will fill the impure and begin to mix with the reagent remove emerging corrosion inhibitor impure from the cup mix the content of the impure by inverting it several times allowing the bubble to travel from end to end each time wipe all liquid from the exterior of the impure and wait for 10 minutes for full color development place emerging corrosion inhibitor ampule flat and downwards in the center tube of the comparator direct the comparator towards the source of bright white light while viewing from the bottom hold the comparator in a nearby horizontal position and rotate it until the color standard below the emergency corrosion inhibitor and to show the closest match record the result and adjust dosage as per the table initial dosage of hydrazine is 0.15 liter per ton of the boiler water of emerging corrosion inhibitor if the ppm is less than 0.03 we need to increase the dosage by 25% if the ppm is between 0.03 to 0.1 it is the satisfactory range in case the ppm goes beyond 0.1 we need to decrease the dosage by 25% neutralize conductivity test following procedure is used to carry out neutralize conductivity test connect the conductivity electrode to the meter press the power button to power up the meter add two drops of phenolic indicator to the cool boil water sample and stir if the sample turns pink add gallic acid while stirring until the pink color disappears this neutralizes the sample place the electrode into the sample and take care to ensure that liquid level is above the upper steel band stir the electrode gently in the sample to create a homogeneous sample allow time for reading to take place note the reading on the display 
record the result and adjust dosage as per the table. Up to 700 microsiemens per centimeter, it is the satisfactory range and we need to perform normal product. But if the conductivity goes beyond 700 microsiemens per centimeter, we need to increase the slowdown to reduce the conductivity. Last test is condensate pH test. Following procedure is used to carry out condensate pH test. Collect 50 ml cold condensate sample and pour into evaporating dish. Add 3 drops of nucleic indicator. Sample should turn pink. Add sulfuric acid and by 10 drop by drop until pink color disappears. Record the result and adjust dosage as necessary. Initial dosage of condensate corrosion inhibitor is 0.15 liter per ton of boiling water. If there is no PLPT available, we need to increase the dosage by 25%. If we are able to neutralize the phenolic LPT by one or two drops, it is a satisfactory range. In case three or more drops are used to neutralize the phenolic LPT, we need to reduce the dosage by 25%. This completes the boiler water testing procedure. To conclude this tutorial, let's see the recommended limits. This table describes about the treatment of water for marine boilers as per recommendations of European standard BS 1170 of 1983. Phenolphthalein alkalinity in case of water tube boiler should be between 100 to 150 ppm. In case of smoke tube boiler, it should be between 300 to 500 ppm. Total alkalinity in case of water tube boiler should be less than 2 times phenolphthalein alkalinity. In case of smoke tube boiler, its value should be between 450 to 900 ppm. Chlorides. In case of water tube boiler, it should be within 300 ppm. In case of smoke tube boiler, the limit is 1200 ppm. Excess phosphate. In case of water tube boiler, we need to maintain excess phosphate within 20 to 40 ppm. In case of smoke to boiler, it should be between 30 to 70 ppm. Reserve hydrazine. In water to boiler, we need to maintain reserve hydrazine between 0.03 to 0.1 ppm. In case of smoke to boiler, it is not necessary. This completes the study of boiler water testing. This book is written by me and covers all the topics as per Indian Maritime University syllabus. It is also recommended by Indian Maritime University as a reference book. It clarifies the concepts with simple illustrations. This book also provides answers to all the questions which have appeared in the examination conducted by Indian Maritime University. This book can help the students in preparing for the exam and also to work on the ship boiler safety. Hope you have liked the lecture. You can write your feedback in the comment box. 
If you have made this tutorial, you may share it with your friends. You may subscribe to the channel for getting notifications about new tutorials. I will be back with a new lecture shortly. Thanks for watching till the end.